Hello, welcome to another video. If you know how to parameterize a function, then you're good. Maybe you might just learn one or two things in what I'm about to explain. But if you've never heard of it, or you don't understand it, or you're struggling with it, well, this is the video. Because adding a parameter to a function is an easy thing, very easy. And I'm gonna show you the easiest one and then I'm going to show you other things you could do just to make um, the parameterization um, either faster or more sophisticated or more accurate. Okay, so I think those are the things you could do with it. So, the way this is, y depends on x but when you introduce a parameter what it does is it makes y depend on it it makes x depend on it so you can do many things that you otherwise could not have done can you plot a graph like this have you ever seen a graph like this now the problem is most of the things we deal with are functions and definitely, this is not a function, okay? Because it fails the vertical line test. So, and when we plot circles, we don't really plot circles, you know, in rectangular form. We usually just sketch. We just know what the radius is, okay? And then we just do this and say, okay, there's a radius of radius r. If it's an ellipse, that's the same thing we do. Just say, oh, this is an ellipse. You know, we just do something like this and we say that's an ellipse. But if you want to be accurate and you don't have things like this because the function for this is crazy, but with a parameter, you can find every single value of X and every single value of Y and plot them on a graph. So how do you introduce a parameter to any given function? Okay, now you can do it. Let's look at the easiest way. So mode one, which is mode easy. I'm going to call this easy. I'm just going to replace X with the parameter. I'm going to say X is equal to T. So Y will be equal to, I'm going to replace X with T. So it's going to be three T squared minus two. So if you want to plot this graph, it's the typical graph you would plot. All you have to do is make a table and say, this is t, this is x, and this is y. And then you're gonna pick values, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, for example. Well, this is gonna be the same thing because x equals t, and this is um, negative one, zero, one, two. And then you plug in the values for negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Let's see what this would be. Um, what would it be? <laughs> I plug in negative one here, I'm gonna get one. If I plug in zero, I'm gonna get negative two. If I plug in this, it's gonna be one, and this is gonna be 10. Okay, so you, can, you see, can see that this is a parabola, right? Where the minimum is negative two, which obviously is here, and that happens when x equals zero, so we can say one, two, and then when, um, but this is the basis for it. Okay, but the point I want to make why I made this table is when you sketch a parametric curve, you have to always state the direction. So note that this is going from negative two to two, it's going to the right. What's happening to the values of X? The values of X are going from negative to positive because dx dt is positive, which means X is going in the same direction as t. That's going to be the next mode I'm going to show you. So when you parameterize this easy way, you always have x and t going in the same direction. Okay, so here, as t is going in this direction, x is going in this direction, and this is what you have. Well, if you plot this, this is going to be when t is negative 1, x will be negative 1, so negative 1 here, and y is 1. And here, you have y is 1. So you have a curve that goes this something like this. That's the kind of curve we're talking about. Okay? This is the parameterized form. Now, 
and in what direction it's still going. Remember we said it's going from left to right, so you have to put your arrows here. But, mode two. So if you want to change the direction, all you have to say is that x is equal to negative t. That's it, just say x equals negative t, and then what will y be? y will be equal to three times negative t squared minus two, which gives you three times t squared minus two. So with this, if you make your table, this is what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look like this t, x, and this is gonna be y. So negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. This is gonna be um, the opposite direction. Two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, because of that. But you're still gonna get the same values of y, okay? Because by the time you can see that the function is the same, okay? So if you plug in t, the same thing is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get 10, um, one, you're gonna get negative two, one, and 10. So when you sketch the graph this time, your graph is gonna go in the opposite direction. That's the only thing that has changed. The values still stay the same. But you're now you're going in the opposite direction just because dx dt for this one is negative. Okay? Now, the third mode is the speed mode. <laughs> okay. This manipulation allows you to determine how quickly you want to finish sketching your curve or how slowly. Now remember, the more gap you have between points, the less accurate you're going to be, but the quicker you see the whole shape. So if you want to be more accurate, okay, but you won't see the total picture until after a while, but you'll be more precise with the shape of the curve, then you need to make dx dt as small as possible. Okay, so which, let's go to the third one, the speed mode. So if you want to be as fast as possible in sketching the curve, maybe this curve, you don't know what it's gonna be like. So what you do is you're gonna say x is equal to, make t as small as possible. Let's say t is, let's do one half. I mean, x is one half of t rather. So if x is one half of t, then you're gonna go compute y to be equal to three. Instead of writing x now, we write one half of t, which is gonna be one half of t squared minus two. Well, what would that give you? This is gonna give you three times one over four t squared minus two. That's equal to three over four t squared minus two. That is the corresponding y. So x is half of t and this is three over four t squared minus two. And then you can make a table, you're going to get another answer. So let's say you want to get more sophisticated for any reason. You just don't want to do the boring thing of just writing this or writing this or writing this and you want to go, you know what, I'm going to say x equals 2t minus 3 for example, then it means that when you parameterize this, you're gonna get y equals three times two t minus three, all squared minus two. Now it's your job to do this algebra. So don't attempt this if you know your algebra is shaky, just stick to the easy ones, okay? So we're gonna have three times, if we square this, we foil it out, it's gonna be four t squared minus 12, t plus 9 minus 2. This is equal to, if we clean this up, it's going to be 12t squared minus 36t. Then 3 times 9 is 27 minus 2. That's 25. So when you make your table, what are the values you're going to get? Well, the values are going to be different from this, but by the time you plot the curve, it's gonna be this one. Now, the question I wanna ask you, just as a quick test, what direction do you think this is gonna go? Will it go from left to right or from right to left? Well, what is dx dt? It is positive, it's gonna be two. That means you're going this way and it's gonna go faster than this one because dx dt here is one, 
the x to t here is 2, so you're going to complete sketching your curve faster, but it will not be as accurate as this one with the single points. I hope this video helped you. I'll see you in the next video. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.